All right, welcome back to my five fave weight loss hacks for 2019 series. That's all just a big mouthful. Uh, so today we've got number three on the weight loss hack list, which you guys are going to probably go, oh, Karen, how is that a weight loss hack? But I'm telling you, ladies, this is one of the all-time best that I have seen after working with thousands of women. This is it. This is one of the best hacks you can do. And it is, wait for it, it's sleep. Oh, dang, why couldn't it have been some magic pill that I could take, right? No, it's sleep. And don't underestimate it, ladies. This is one of, like I said, seriously one of the biggest, it has one, some of the biggest impact on your ability to lose weight and as well just how much it has to do with the amount that you eat, which is very interesting. Okay, so first of all, let's get into maybe the signs that your symptoms that you're not getting enough sleep. So number one, increased hunger, and we're gonna go why, through why that is. So you just find you know like you you eat, and the next thing you know you're hungry again. You just it's like you're you just you're constantly battling with your hunger. Okay. Uh, cravings for sugar. This is a huge part of lack of sleep, uh, especially, you know, car it just any kind of carby food, which is sugar. But some people, when I say sugar, they immediately associate that with something super sweet. But it could just simply be that you have this, you know, insatiable need to eat carbs, okay, all the time. And once again, you're battling with that. You feel like, oh my gosh, I'm such a carb addict, okay? It could be because of lack of sleep. Uh, you get less than seven hours of sleep on a regular basis. You actually know for a fact that you have insomnia. It's pretty easy to, to know whether or not you have it. So that could mean that you don't fall asleep very easily, or you may be able to fall asleep, but you wake up in the night for a couple of hours, or you wake up super early and you can't get back to sleep again. <laughs> you're a mom. I have to put that in because I think if you're a mom, you usually have some degree of sleep issues, right? It, especially if you've got little ones. If you've got little kids, you know what I'm talking about. No need for me to say more. We've all been there. It sucks. You do not sleep and sometimes there's not much you can do about that either. But there are little tricks that I will go through and maybe you can start implementing them and getting a little bit better sleep even though you have young kids, okay? I felt like with my own on both of them, I don't think I had a good night's sleep for years, years and years. So I'm sure many of you can agree with that. Uh, you feel tired, but you're wired. So basically... You know that you're exhausted, you feel it, but yet you're wired up, like you just can't stop moving, but you can't relax either, okay? So it's just one of these like weird things where you're overtired and because of that, you're wired, okay? So that's a, a symptom of, usually it has to do with the adrenal system that you're just taxing the body, you're under too much stress and you're tired, but you're wired, okay? Weight in the stomach area, so bigger bellies, which we see all too frequently. That's where women will always put it on. I know that's where I put it on, and it's a sign that there's too much cortisol in the system, and a lot of that has to do with your sleep and your quality of sleep, your lack of sleep, uh, but it will affect the cortisol levels in your body, which is your stress hormone, and your it's a sign, the belly fat is a sign of that, okay? So guess what the hack is? It's not rocket science. You, you got to sleep. So good quality eight plus hours a night is what I recommend. And you might be like, oh, but I don't need more than six hours. I run really good, Karen, on six hours. Well, then you probably wouldn't be here listening to what you can do to lose weight because you're, con you're probably having an issue with losing weight or you wouldn't be listening to this, right? So if that's you then your six hours is not enough sleep because your body 
is paying the price for it. Okay, so you may mentally feel okay, but physically you are not doing okay and it shows. Okay, so eight plus hours of sleep and quality sleep. And I know you've heard this, but you want to black out the room like no light can get in if you have to wear a sleep mask, you know, the blackout blinds. They say not even an alarm clock light because that will disrupt the circadian rhythm and will disrupt your levels of melatonin. With even an alarm clock light, okay? Get rid of all your phones and your tablets and your laptops out of the room because EMF waves can disrupt your sleep. And also just if it's dinging all night because people are messaging you, if you're someone that gets messages all night long, but uh, if that's you, you just don't want it in there, period. You don't get any notifications at midnight and waking you up. So be smart, get rid of it. Even better is to get rid of all uh, technological devices at least two hours before you plan to go to bed. So that's for those that have a really hard time falling asleep. You want to practice better sleep habits, which is getting rid of all the screens two hours before you want to go to bed, sometimes more for some people. Depending on who you are, there's some people that are very highly affected by the blue lights coming off of the devices, by the EMF waves that are coming off the devices, and it will wire you so that you can't fall asleep. So if that's you, if you're having troubles falling asleep, you know, commit to doing one month of, of good practice of, you know, putting everything away and, and practicing good sleep health and see if it makes a difference, okay? Um, circadian rhythm health. So this is another one. So that does go with, you know, shutting everything down, having dimmed lights at nighttime, because naturally when it gets dark outside, your melatonin kicks on, which is your sleep hormone. And in the morning, you want to make sure you get bright light. And they actually say, which it can be very challenging for some people to do this, but ideally you want to get 20 minutes of direct sunlight on your face, on your eyes, first thing when you wake up. And if you're like me who lives in the mountain where there's like six feet of snow right now, that's probably not going to happen in the pitch dark at 6 a.m. before I go to work. But, you know, you just, <laughs> if you are in a place that you can do that, then ideally that really helps with the circadian rhythm that tells the body to, okay, we can suppress the melatonin. It's time to get up now. Cortisol can come on. And it just gets your body into that really healthy, natural rhythm that we should be in. Okay. Um, SAD lights in the winter are very helpful. So if you can get outside in the morning time and get that sunlight on your face, do what I do and use an SAD light. So seasonal affective disorder lights are great if you get a little bit depressed, a little bit down in the winter time because of the lack of sunlight, it emits the same type of light in onto your face and eyes. It's not as good as the sun, but it's the second best. And just for like 10 minutes in the morning, I'll just sit it beside me while I'm reading and just to give my circadian clock that chance. Um, and they work really, really well for that. So check it out. You can buy them online. Supplements. So we should go over a couple of my fave supplements for just, you know, having that deeper sleep, getting, you know, getting to bed on time. You might need help with just relaxing the system. And so my favorites for that um, are any sort of adrenal complex is always going to be really helpful. If you live in a high stress stage or you're running around, you got kids, you got the job, you got, you're just living the North American life, you may need to be getting some adrenal support to help with that hormonal system. And it doesn't, put you to sleep, but it's going to help in the long run. In the overall picture, it will help you to sleep better, okay? Because it's going to produce a healthier nervous system and it's going to help you sleep deeper. Um, cortisol manager is a really good one. It's got a diff couple different um, things in it that will help to block cortisol at nighttime and just help relax the system. You can get that on Amazon, cortisol manager. L-theanine and GABA are my two fave amino acids that really help uh, just slow down the brain chatter at nighttime. Uh, we want 
you know, when, when we, when we're falling asleep, we want GABA, we want the L-theanine because naturally that's what's being, you know, but that's what's naturally happening in our bodies when it's trying to go to sleep. So we want those, those levels to start coming up and they're super like that. You get them from protein. It's amino acids. So taking it supplement form can just help give you, they're not, you know, they're not addictive. They don't make you um, groggy in the morning. You can take them all day long, really, if, if you want, if you have anxiety, if they're great for that. Um, but I just find as just somebody that's kind of on the go too much, it really helps the brain chatter to stop before I'm going to sleep at nighttime. Okay. Some more uh, calming ones that really kind of they do kind of induce that relaxation state and you probably don't want to take too much in the day. You definitely want to keep these for night um, is v valerian. And then melatonin doesn't make you groggy or fatigued, but it does help with regulating that circadian rhythm again. So taking a time release melatonin at nighttime before bed can help some people. Um, but valerian will definitely calm the system down. You can feel it. You can feel a little bit, you know, tired and groggy from it when you take it at nighttime. Um, but works really well for those people that can't relax very well when it comes to bedtime. Okay. So other little practices, um, is no caffeine after 12 PM. It's my rule that I've always lived by one cup a day only of caffeinated beverages. The first thing in the morning, if you're going to do it and because some people don't break down caffeine very well in their body and I'm definitely one of those. And if you have it too late, it can actually stay in your system and prevent you from falling asleep. So I just say rule of thumb should be one caffeinated beverage a day, first thing in the morning, and that is it. Okay, so whether that's coffee, tea, whatever floats your boat. It also includes chocolate. Chocolate has caffeine in it. So if you're a, a chocolate eater at nighttime, you may want to switch up what you're doing. Um, or eat it earlier because it can affect your sleep. It definitely affects mine. I can't eat chocolate at nighttime or else I'm wide awake because I do not break down caffeine very well in my body. So that is the sleep hack. So stay tuned tomorrow. We've got number four. Okay, everyone, we'll talk to you tomorrow.